Hello, 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 hello. Binary star system. Two stars. Going around their common center of mass. One has a mass twice that of the sun, the other five times that of the sun, and they are separated by 15 astronomical units. And the question is, what is the orbital period? Orbital periods, they both of course have the same orbital period. Otherwise the center of mass would move. An astronomical unit is about 150 million kilometers. It's the mean distance between Earth and Sun. The Earth's orbit is slightly elliptical, but we take a mean value. Before I continue working with uh, circular orbits, binary star systems, I want to remind you that almost all binary star systems are not circular, but are elliptical. That makes the calculations a little tougher for both of us, and so I decided to lower the whole thing to a high school level and make it a system where both orbits are circular. Are ready for this? An astronomical unit is 150 million kilometers. The mass of the Sun is about 2 times 10 to the 30 kilograms. I give you more digits than you need. And the gravitational constant is 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 in units kilogram meter seconds. These two stars, according to Newton's law of gravity, attract each other. There is a force M2 due to the presence of M1 in this direction, and there is a force on M1, same magnitude, due to the presence of M2 in this direction. And this is that force. It's M1 times M2 times G divided by the distance between the two. This orbit is R1, this orbit is R2, and so the distance between the two is R1 plus R2, which is the 15 astronomical units. R1 times M1 must be R2 times M2, because the center of mass is determined that way and cannot move. So this is a key equation. This one and this one should solve the problem. Now, look at this one. The force that is exerted on M1 in this direction must be the centripetal force on M1 to keep it in orbit with radius R1. And that centripetal force is N omega square R. If you forgot about that, you may want to brush up on that. It's also mv squared divided by r, but v is omega r, therefore it's also m omega square r. So it is m1 omega square r1 for this one, and for this point the centripetal force is m2 omega square r2. So you can solve this problem either by using this relationship, it cancels out m1, or you use this relationship which cancelled out M2. Whichever one you choose, you will get, of course, the same results. So pick one of these and combine it with this one. High school algebra, nothing more. If you want to calculate R1 and R2, I'm not saying that you have to calculate both, but if you wanted to do that, R1 is about 10.7 astronomical units are to about 4.3 astronomical units. I then find that omega in radians per second is 9.1 times 10 to the minus 9. The orbital period is 2 pi divided by omega and I now change units from seconds to years and I found that the orbital period is 22.0 years. There are many systems in the sky that are binary star systems. 
enormous fraction of all stars are binary star systems. I want to highlight one very famous system. It's the brightest star in the sky. Sirius A. All of you have seen Sirius A, I would imagine, unless you live on the South Pole. No, then you probably have never seen it. Sirius A is a binary star system. Sirius A has, we call one star A and we call the other star Sirius B. Sirius A is the brightest of the two, has a mass 2.4 times the mass of the Sun. It's about 20 times more luminous than the Sun. And Sirius B has a mass of about 1.0 times the mass of the Sun, so probably the mass of the Sun. And it's about 400 times fainter than the luminosity of the Sun. And what is so spectacular about Sirius B, that its size is only roughly the size of the Earth. That means the density of Sirius B is about a million grams per cubic centimeter, a million times larger than that of water. This was very hard to swallow for our great 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 grandfathers to accept that such stars existed. We now know they do. We call them white dwarfs. And Sirius B is the first white dwarf that was discovered. And there's something remarkable about the history of that. Bessel an astronomer measured extremely accurately over more than decades the position of Sirius in the sky relative to, of course, stars in the background. And he noticed that that star, Sirius, was not standing still relative to the background stars, but was actually making some kind of a circle. And he predicted that there would be another star, that Sirius was not a single star, but that Sirius was a double star. And he concluded from his observations that the orbital period of that system should be about 50 years. He wrote in 1838 a letter to Alexander von Humboldt. And I will quote his letter. It was in German, but I've translated it in English. He wrote, I adhere to the conviction that the star Sirius is a binary star consisting of a visible and an invisible star. And now comes his famous words. There is no reason to suppose that luminosity is an essential quality of cosmic bodies. Visibilities of countless stars is no argument against the invisibility of countless others. And with that famous statement, Bessel opened up a whole new way of seeing, namely the astronomy of the invisible. And he wrote that letter, I think I mentioned that to Alexander von Humboldt. In 1862, Alvin Clark, famous for his designs of telescopes, built an 18 and a half inch refractor, which at that time was the largest telescope that existed. About this big? Yeah, probably about this big. And to test his telescope when it was ready, he looked at Sirius when it was rising above the sky of Boston. He 
lived in Cambridge, Massachusetts. I lived there too. And he immediately spotted that there was a very bright star, Sirius, but there was an extremely faint one, about 10,000 times fainter than Sirius A. And he realized that that was the companion that Bessel had predicted. Remarkable history. White dwarfs are plentiful in our galaxy. Density is a million times larger than that water. The average density of the sun, by the way, is about one gram per cubic centimeter. White dwarfs a million times larger. Historically, it sometimes even keeps me awake. The beauty of his statements, of Bessel's statements, which I will repeat. There is no reason to suppose that luminosity is an essential quality of cosmic bodies. Invisibilities of countless stars is no argument against the invisibility of countless others. Isn't that beautiful? It's, it's fabulous. <laughs> this is what science is all about. The beauty, the elegance. Okay. Try to read up on series A and B. The two stars are 20 astronomical units apart. Orbits are not precisely circular. You can also look up what the ellipticity is. Read up about white dwarfs, and while you edit, also read up on neutron stars. You might as well. <laughs> Sirius is an X-ray system. So we call it an X-ray binary. X-ray astronomy was my field of research. I have published 450 refereed publications in X-ray astronomy during my 43 years at MIT. So my heart is pumping for X-rays. And the reason why Sirius A is such a clear X-ray source is because of the presence of Sirius B. So read up on it. Have a nice day. Take care. And for sure, for sure, we will be friends. That's a given. I just watched the solutions to the binary star problem. Uh, a few minor corrections. When I talk about Newton's law of gravity, which of course is inversely proportional to the distance square. I did say R1 plus R2, but I wrote correctly, of course, R1 plus R2 square. I then state, well, most of you have seen Sirius, and that's probably a correct statement. And I said, unless you live on the South Pole. I meant to say, unless you live on the North Pole. Because the declination of Sirius is minus 16 degrees. Declination, minus 16 degrees. So if you live very far north, far above the polar circles, you wouldn't be able to see Sirius. I also stated that Sirius is an X-ray source. That is correct. I said because of the fact that Sirius B is a white dwarf. That is only partially correct because both Sirius A and Sirius B can be seen in X-rays. If you Google Chandra Observatory, X-ray observations of Sirius, you will see a wonderful picture. You will see both Sirius A and you will see Sirius B. Okay? I didn't want to record all this, but I hope you will accept these minor corrections. <laughs>